Jean-Michel Basquiat had endless inspiration. He was the embodiment of artistic flow. And while most artists will never approach anything close to his once-in-a-generation talent, there are a few things you can learn from his work methods that will help you tap into your own creative genius. For example, at the beginning of his career, Basquiat went out and bought two books. Two books that would inform all of his work right up until his death. The first book was this one, Henry Dreyfus Symbol Source Book. This rare book would end up providing source material for almost all of the 1,500 drawings and 600 paintings that he left behind. His art was filled with symbols, ladders, crowns, crosses, copyrights, and all of them came from this rare book. Many of them are gathered on one page, page 90, a page that almost looks like a dictionary of his whole artistic language. And if you look at the symbol over here, that's the Mandai's symbol. He used this symbol, sadly, to symbolize and prophesize his own death. Source material. One of the secrets to staying in flow. Basquiat used source material like he was Jay Dilla sampling records. But source material alone won't automatically give you creativity. You have to learn how to use it the artist's way. Ultimately, it comes down to taste. It comes down to trying to expose yourself to the best things that humans have done and then try to bring those things in to what you're doing. I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy. Great artists steal. Stealing like an artist means stealing with no judgment. Let your taste make the decisions, not your brain. Where do the, the words come from? I, it, um, real life books, real television. Yeah, and you, you just skim them and uh, start including no, I mean, certain, I'm, when I'm working, I hear them, you know, and I just throw them down. Oh, yeah? Well, I mean, things like Punic Wars, I remember that was in one of your... Oh, that, that, that was from a, a, a guidebook on Roman history. History of Roman, five pages, you know? Yeah, and so you snatched a few words from it. I didn't you know? snatch them, you know. They, they caught your... They caught my eye, and I, you know, and I took them. The moment you stop judging, should I use this? What would people say? You open yourself up for flow. Go, go through, what, what's this? It's Pluto based on a, a drawing that was a, the first drawing of the moon by Galileo. Yeah. This looks like an eye? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the evil eye, the Malocchio. Oh. Okay, so you're stealing like an artist now, but how do you become more than just the sum of your influences? How do you make it all make, make sense? sense? You choose what serves your message. The second book that gave Basquiat his unparalleled God momentum is... This one, Flash of the Spirit, a book about African art. This book was key in helping him zero in on his message. You see, the reason most artists lose flow when they're working is because when they get stuck, they have no guiding ideology to get them out of their tough spots. And because they don't know what they're trying to communicate to the world, any roadblock could stop them in their tracks for days. Overthinking. Staring at a blank canvas, artist paralysis. That's what happens when you don't have an overarching message in your work. Basquiat did. I think there's a lot of people that are, that are, that are neglected in, in, in art. I don't know if, because if, it's, if it's who made the paintings or what. But, um, I don't know, see, I know black people are never really portrayed realistically. Or not even portrayed, I mean, not even portrayed in modern art enough. And because he had a message, art came out of him that much more effortlessly. It's not just that he had source material, it's that he had a place to channel it. Is there any anger in you? Any anger in you? Of course there is. Yeah, of course there is. Talk about that. Tell me about the anger. What are you angry about? Hmm. Anger mm. His work became a commentary on the underrepresentation of black art in the established art world. Th this looks like a, uh, a, a skull. What's a casco? A what? Casco. A gasco? What's casco? Casco. C-A-S-C-O. When you have a message, art comes out of you easily. But a message, tons of source material, and your newfound audacity to steal like an artist is still not enough. You'll never have that Basquiat limitless inspiration and flow if you don't master speed.
The day Basquiat met Andy Warhol, he ran back home and painted a self-portrait of both of them from a Polaroid his idol had just taken. And then he ran back to the restaurant to give it to him as a gift. The paint was still fresh. Warhol couldn't believe it. All he kept repeating was, Oh, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. He's faster than me. Oh, God. You're so fast and these are so great. And that was the beginning of everything between Andy and, and Jean-Michel. When one of the most prolific artists of all time is jealous of your speed, you know you're doing something right. Speed. Work quickly, like a demon. You should work so fast that you don't have time to think. The brain is your enemy in art. Like they say in the music industry, keep the tape rolling. But if you really want to become the legendary artist that you have the potential to be, if you really want that endless inspiration, you have to understand that most of the flow that you will have while making art will come from all the things you were doing when you were not making art. What? In between your creative sessions, while everyone else is busy consuming regurgitated content on social media, you should go offline. And you should go deep. Most people, they need to rev up when they sit down to work. They need hours before they can finally get into the groove. That's because they haven't been beating their minds during their downtime. I never went to an art school. I failed the art courses that I, that I did take in, in school. Um, I just looked at I just looked at a lot of things, and that's what and, that, and that's what I think I learned about art by looking at it. Go to museums. Yeah, that's a Roman belt buckle. It's from a drawing that I did at the Metropolitan. I went over to the Metropolitan Museum and I just did the drawing of the buckle and I came back with it and I put it right there. Oh, well, that's that's kind of a slow process. Well, I'm a slow person. The process may seem slow to an outsider. But that slow process is what makes you outrageously fast when you get back into the studio. Study, memorize, and internalize. Make that your mantra. And those ideas you consume will marinate inside of you and eventually become part of your artistic DNA. Suddenly, the oddest things will come out of you at the most unexpected times. And it's all because you made yourself this well of inspiration. You became a student of life, ready at any time to express your genius. For more tips on growing your creativity, listen to the Make Art Not Content podcast on Spotify and Apple Music.